The Aldis Podcast is brought to you by Aldis International, supplying your expert AI and digital transformation staffing needs across the US and Europe. Today, you are listening to our ServiceNow series, where we interview the best and brightest of the industry to share their story, advice, and views on the exciting world of ServiceNow and digital transformation. Hello, everybody. It's Mark Kelly here, Chief Customer Officer at Aldis International. As part of our ServiceNow podcast series, I'm very, very happy to welcome Sashin Namjoshi. Sashin is our guest today, and he is a ServiceNow community MVP for the seventh year in a row. And this year, he became a ServiceNow developer MVP in 2023. Sashin, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, thank you, Mark. Uh, it's a pleasure to uh, be on this podcast and share my experience. Thank you so much. So, Sashin, before we kind of jump into your work within ServiceNow, how did you even get into the world of ServiceNow? Um, you know, kind of racking up all those titles, you kind of feel like maybe you were born into it, but I'm sure you had to start somewhere. Yes. Uh, so, prior to ServiceNow, I was working as a Java developer uh, for my company. And uh, even before Java, I worked on a, a very legacy competitor of service now uh, so and i i had i mean i had a lot of issues with that uh, legacy platform so uh, my organization wanted me to evaluate the available platforms at that time and then choose the best one which is available so that's uh, that's how like i came into world of service now and then i got excited so you joined service now. how did you ramp up your own learnings so you obviously made the move from from java from the open source Mark, how did you ramp up your own learnings? And then you know, what kind of got you involved with the community? Because you know, you're sharing an awful lot of content. You're very passionate about kind of making it easy for people to learn. What gave you the additional motivation to do that, but also become so involved and try to add value? Yeah, so this is like, uh, this work uh, for me in both ways. So first I was on the other side of the aisle, uh, where was, uh, when I started, I asked, started asking questions and um, most of the questions were uh, answered like accurately 90% of the time. So that's how I figured out that I also should be on this other side uh, to help people and to build their implementations uh, in best efficient and the most optimized way. So that's how I got into community. And when you look at the different learns and, and as you research new information and you put it into practice yourself, have you got a certain strategy to do that? Or is it just when you get a little bit of time, you, you share some of your learnings? Uh, so uh, I make sure that I'm uh, on the community like most of my work day because, uh, you know, I'm in community, people ask some unique problems. And uh, if I don't know, then I go and figure it out. So that is a new learning for me every day. So that's how I look at it. That's amazing. So if you don't know it and someone's asking about it, you'll actually say, hey, I'm going to try to figure this out myself and then pass all the learnings. Yeah. So like, you know, right, ServiceNow provides the free personal instance, right? I mean, it's like the Pandora box. Uh, it's up to you. What do you want to find out and help people? So that's what I do. It's a great attitude and then the daily discipline of doing that is kind of helping you build that knowledge and, and luckily for us the community learns within that knowledge as well tell us about some of the work that you can actually do day to day in in your role in service now as developer architect yes so i have work uh, in like all the aspects of the implementation like uh, i do the design uh, and then i do the implementation in terms of uh, like developing new custom applications and then implementing the out of the box applications LCS. And then uh, I also got involved in uh, doing the performance improvement of the existing applications. Uh, so in terms of both like the UI performance and the client and server performance. And when you look at the recent innovations that have come in from, from Utah, what, what's, what's impressed you so far? Yeah, the most impressive part for me is the UI builder and the uh, the RPA hub. Uh, 
uh so rpa you know right i mean it's like a, a service now is new into the space uh but i have used this rpa with some other platforms and it has a lot of use cases and it has a lot of uh, potential as well so that is something exciting me when you look at the uh, the big drive to get more people involved in the community and embracing kind of low code no code and and some of the kind of the move move in the certain different directions that service now is going where do you kind of see the platform evolving to uh yeah i mean since, since with this low code and uh, uh, i mean there's no zero code but low code and no code platforms uh, uh i i see that it's going to improve because it's going to help the non technical people to be on the platform and develop the new apps quickly and efficiently uh so i see it's it has, it has a great future uh but i see there are some things like which for which you still need a technical background for example i want to integrate my service now application with some some other application so i should know what is rest i should know what is soap so even if service now provides the tools to build the rest integration but you should know how it works actually so but i see great future at least to develop a uh, simple apps with low code or no code platforms like service now and if you had a kind of a magic wand in terms of direction you'd like service now to go into as well any particular preference uh so i think there are a couple of areas uh so one is the like mobile app development uh so a lot of big companies now their motto is uh, mobile first so i know service now has now mobile app capability but i think uh, there are some uh, things which are not available like simulators and all and then all the interop availability for that simulators so i think if i had the magic wand i can do that and then i think service now will grow even more with that what do you find challenging about kind of doing your role and balancing the community uh, initiatives is is there a certain aspect that you have kind of allow yourself to maybe have a little bit of time in the morning to try to get some of the learnings in late at night or is it kind of a hodgepodge in terms of a strategy uh so what i do is uh, like uh, just like any other architects and developer right so i work in a scaled agile framework and i am assigned with the stories like for every week so we, i have a sprint of every week so what i do is i make sure that i complete my all the stories for this week uh, as far as uh, i mean as fast as i can and as efficient as i can and then uh, later in the day sometimes like at 4:30 pm or something i started i start working on community okay yeah i like that so you kind of get the the main work done and then you've got additional time then that you've kind of eked out to try to ensure that you you're learning and growing which is actually helping everybody um as, as well what advice would you offer to people who are new in the community or a little bit had a hesitant to reach out and seek advice and are just just trying to figure out the platform yeah so my advice will be like um this is the best i think this is the best community in all the technical communities we have so if you have any questions and if you don't know how to find the answer just even before google you come here uh, that's what i tell them <laughs> this is like a google of service now so <laughs> that's that's great advice uh, that's really 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 good uh, today on our podcast we have been speaking to sashin and sashin has been giving us a little bit of an overview about his work within the service now community sashin and josie has a service now community mvp for the seventh year in a row and this year became a service now developer mvp for 2023 and he tell us a little bit about how he balances his day between actually doing his work but also having new learns and taking into consideration people's challenges and how he actually proactively goes about figuring it out himself and then offering up his advice within the community. Sashin, thank you very much for spending some time on our podcast today. Thank you, Mark. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Aldis Podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review. We are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and any Android podcast of choice. You can also head over to our website, www.aldis.com to listen to more podcasts, view our open roles, and stay up to date with industry news. 
Thanks for listening and stay tuned for more great episodes coming very soon.